um, I'm, I guess I'm going to get things going here. Um, for, I think most everybody knows who I am. Bob Clements. I'm the current president of the Southbridge Business Partnership and uh, also one of the family members here at High Tools. Um, I've got my brother in the back and, and my wife is managing the bar over there now. <laughs> <laughs> Which is usually my role, sort of. We, we share that one. So. She's usually talking. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, anyways. And, <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, welcome and uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is kind of neat. Um, so far this year, this is our second meeting. <coughs> and I think... Uh, you know, uh, we're heading down the path of uh, getting away from the COVID regulations. Uh, we are um, videotaping this event, so uh, um, those of you that will be speaking tonight, I'm just kind of, it's tough, tough, but you can hold the mic and you should be able to be fine with it. Um, anyways, um, tonight uh, we have three speakers um, talking, you know, kind of quickly, but 10 to 15 minutes each. Uh, talking about their individual things. Um, uh, Kevin Kuros um, is uh, from the Mass Office of Business Development. Kevin's going to be talking about uh, what the state can offer our businesses and uh, things that are available to each of us. And Melissa uh, is from, and uh, here we go again, QVCDC. So <laughs> Quaybog, and I had to write this down because I knew, with, you know, Quaybog Valley uh, uh, Community Development Corp. And, and again, talking about um, ways that uh, she can help each of us financially um, operate our businesses in the community. So um, this is all that, that business background. And then right now, um, the next person speaking is Jerry Maldonado from um, Quinnebog uh, Community College, Quaybog, uh, Quinsigamon <laughs> Community College. Here we go, Quaybog, Quinsigamon, we're gonna do it. QCC. Um, yeah, I'm a graduate, too, of that. So isn't my wife. But anyways, um, and uh, Jerry's going to talk about, you know, the new location at Southbridge High, uh, opportunities for employees and, and anything business-related or anything that, you know, uh, each of us may have needs to educate employment um, um, for our, our people that are working for us. So um, those are the three speakers we have tonight. Um, I am going to um, put the floor out is, I'm trying to think, um, I'm trying to think, there's a new person at Southbridge, High, at Southbridge School System, um, and I don't see her, yeah, she didn't, she didn't come, so, uh, yeah, all right, and, uh, but anyways, there'll be open mic at the end if you want to speak, uh, the other thing is, is that, you know, again, we're here until 8 o'clock at, at, at the bitter end, so if you want to talk to anybody, um, please grab them at the end of this and uh, um, have, have open conversation because uh, that's what this is all about, trying to get businesses and we're trying to bring people in to help each of you operate those businesses. So, um, Starting off, I, I'm going to bring Kevin up to start with, and um, I'm going to lead you off, Kev, and, and you're going to have to... Uh, uh, figure it out, but it's going to be easy. So uh, easy uh, room. So here we go. <laughs> All right, let the heck alone begin. Thank yeah. <laughs> so Bob, for our guest speakers, yep. they don't have to stay until eight o'clock. No, they don't have to yeah. stay. No, no. Okay. You, you can leave whenever you want. Over. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I just, you know, what I'm saying is, yeah. I mean, well, believe it or not, we didn't get out of Finns until eight o'clock. So. Not what time you left the bar. What time? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go to the bar. <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody. Um, this should be pretty easy for me to do. I I'm a uh, recovering politician. I spent um, eight, eight years in the legislature and uh, have been part of the Baker Polito administration now for just going on three years. So um, my name is Kevin Kuros. I am the Central Mass uh, Regional Director for the Mass Office of Business Development. And, uh, the, you know, what we run into in government all the time are like way too many acronyms uh, usually and and way too many similar names. For example, you may have heard of mass development, right? They are the state's bank. That's not us, okay? Um, we are the mass office of business development. Um, and it's an important distinction because um, whereas you know, many of the organizations that we deal with 
are quasis, which means their leadership team is appointed uh, and serve at the pleasure of the governor, but they are separate uh, organizations with a you know, separate balance sheet and everything else. Um, our office is actually part of the Baker Polito administration. Okay. So um, we report into Secretary uh, Mike Keneally. Uh, he's the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development. And the way that the Secretary um, has organized our Secretariat, uh, he has a vertical that focuses on housing, and he has a vertical that focuses uh, on economic development. So we're obviously in the economic development side of the House, work very closely with the other side of the House as well. But what is our role? Um, so there are six regions uh, that the state's been divided up into, and there's a regional director like myself for each of the six regions, with the exception of Western Mass right now is vacant. So if you know anybody who loves business development and economic development who lives in Western Mass, have them shoot their resume over to me because we're, we're looking for, you know, for someone like myself in uh, Western Mass. But um, our role really um, is, is twofold. First, um, the, the, there's one main program that our office uh, manages, and that's EDIP, or the Economic Development Incentive Program. And you've, you're probably more familiar with it than you actually may realize that you are. Has, has anybody here, maybe show of hands, ever heard of the term TIF uh, for a local business? Okay. That's our program. Okay. So that stands for Tax Increment Financing Program. Okay, so that is a subset of the Economic Development Incentive Program. We're going to be quizzed on these acronyms, by the way, <laughs> at, at the end here. So, All right. So, uh, you know, the, the initial reason our office existed was really um, the, the program is not necessarily, you know, 100% uh, intuitive. So, our role as regional directors is to help both businesses and municipalities navigate the program just to make sure that everything goes smoothly um, and that businesses are able to, to take advantage of the incentives. So what is the program? So um, you know, as the acronym says, Economic Development Incentive Program, it is a program designed to uh, incentivize businesses to, to do three things, basically. We're, we're driven on three metrics at, at the Secretariat. Job retention, job creation, and capital investment. And those are the three things that kind of everything we work on supports one of those three things. So uh, how does the program work? I'll, like, I'll just give you a for instance. So you, ha you have a manufacturing uh, business, and you currently occupy a 20,000 square foot building, okay? And your business is doing well, and you want to expand uh, and put an addition on. Um, and so you would, you know, uh, approach the municipality, for example, and and, uh, and and tell them what you're interested in doing. Well, we want to double our space. We want to go from 20,000 20, to 40,000 square feet. Um, and when we do that, we're going to invest a couple million dollars to put the building up. We're going to spend another million or two on manufacturing equipment. And when we're done with all that, we're going to go from 15 employees up to 25 employees. Okay, this is a hypothetical scenario. So how does the program work? Well, uh, in partnership with the municipality, and the program is available in every municipality uh, in the Commonwealth, not all, all you know, communities choose to participate in it, but you can ask the community uh, to support uh, your request for a TIF. And the way a TIF works is, uh, I'll give you just a real simple way of thinking about this. Uh, the building as it sits, you pay X amount in property tax, right? that's due to the community every year. You put an addition onto that building, all of a sudden your parcel becomes more valuable because you've just made a capital investment uh, in your parcel. So what happens to your taxes whenever your, capital, your parcel value goes up? Your taxes go up, right? So that incremental amount that your taxes increased based upon the capital investment you just made in your community and in, well, in your business, in your community, that's what's in play with our program. And so it's a negotiated agreement between the municipality and the business. And the municipality can offer you the parameters of the program are pretty broad. And it's, again, completely negotiable, negotiable between the business and the community. We don't get involved in the negotiations at all. It's not our role. But the community can offer you anywhere from 5% relief up to 100% relief of that additional tax liability for anywhere from five years for up to 20 years. 
So, you know, depending on the nature of the project, are you taking a blighted area that you're going to, you know, revitalize? Um, are, you know, are you, you know, going to create a number of, you know, a large number of new jobs? Whatever the parameters are, you sit down and, and you have a, you know, you negotiate a win-win position, okay? So let's assume for a second that the community approves a TIF, uh, which is what this is called, and they're going to offer you whatever, 25% reduction on your, that increased tax liability for the next 10 years, okay? If indeed the community offers you a significant incentive, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in a second, you can also then apply for state tax credits for relief from your corporate tax liability. So your corporate excise tax that you pay every year, um, you can actually uh, request relief through the Economic Development Incentive Program uh, for relief. And what's really interesting about it is uh, I mentioned the three metrics that we care about, job retention, job creation, and capital investment. The community is most interested in the capital investment because that's going to increase the value of the parcel and, and ultimately the, the, the tax revenue that's going to be generated. The state, and obviously we all care about all of this, but the state is going to be more uh, interested in, and excited about the job creation aspect of it. So our credits are typically tied, you know, it, it, it'll be a number, 5000 or $10,000 or $15,000 per job created. And when you sign up for the program, you commit that over the next five years, I'm going I'm to create 15 new jobs. It'd be three a, three a year for the next five years, whatever is appropriate for your project, right? And your, your feet are held to the fire. You have to report annually on that. And there is a clawback provision, if you don't miss. And, and things happen, you know, like COVID happened. You know, and, uh, you know, and, and literally every business, you know, that we know of, you know, was asking for a waiver, and we're certainly understanding about these things. Um, but um, that's the program. It, it, it's an opportunity when you're ready to, to expand your business, um, or for a new business, you know, moving into a community, for example, um, to potentially get uh, some relief on your local tax liability and your corporate tax liability. So that's why we exist, okay? That's why our office uh, was, was you know, started so many years ago. But the secretary um, doesn't just want us being the tax incentive guys and gals, okay? He, he really wants us almost to be um, outside sales for state incentive programs. So, you know, my job is, you know, I guess 50% administrator, 50% sales, you know, and it's getting out and talk to people about what the state can offer. So um, there's not a meeting that I have with a business that I don't talk about the Workforce Training Fund program. And if you've not taken advantage of it, shame on you because you're paying into it if you're a business owner. So every two weeks when you make payroll, you pay into the state's unemployment insurance fund, okay? A very small percentage of that behind the scenes is diverted uh, into the state's workforce training fund account. Law of large numbers, that very small amount times every business in the Commonwealth, we end up with around $21 million a year that's in this training account that is available for training grants to help defray your cost of training people in your business. Okay? What's really cool about the program is it is a matching grant program. So if you're going to be awarded $20,000 for training your employees, you have to put in $20,000 to get that twenty. dollars right? The beauty of the program, though, is it is what's called an in-kind match. And what that means is essentially all you have to do is keep track of your people's loaded costs, their salary, their benefits, whatever, while they are doing training instead of doing producing widgets that then becomes your match. So while it's a, technically a matching grant program, you rarely have to write um, a check for your match. You just account for the cost of your people's time while they're doing training rather than their regular job. And more often than not, that becomes your match, okay? So literally every time I meet with a business, that's not our program, but that program is, is administered by one of our, our, you know, our partners. We have this whole notion of, we call it Team Massachusetts. So you call any one, of, any one of us, you get all of us. So someone may approach us about tax incentives, but then we're talking to them like, well, how are you gonna fund that addition to your, to your building? Well, uh, we're still working on the capital stack. We're not quite sure how we're gonna you know, fund the entire thing. Well, have you ever spoken with mass development? Uh, no, can you introduce me? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So Mass Development, another quasi that we work with as part of Team Massachusetts, is the state's bank. 
okay, essentially. So uh, many of you are probably familiar with Devons. You know, how many years ago the U.S. Army said, hey, you know, how would you like to have, whatever, 10,000 acres of land? We'll give it to you. You know, and we said, oh, great, that's fantastic, right? And then you find out it's, you know, contaminated and it needs a lot of work to, to redevelop, you know. So, so, so they put it in the land bank, and, and, and that's, that was the genesis of mass development, actually. And, and so mass development was created as a development entity for Devons. Work, has worked so well that a number of years back, they just said, let's just open this up anywhere. So it's just a phenomenal partner of ours. They bring us into, you know, opportunities all the time. We bring them into opportunities all the time. The beauty of mass development, um, do we have any lenders in, in the room? Any? Okay, okay. Great. So um, typically uh, you guys will loan what on a project? 70%, right? Loan to value ratio is kind of general rule of thumb, right? Beauty of mass development is they can go to 90%. They will never compete with a private lender. What they will typically do is say, hey, here's a project. Someone wants to spend a million dollars to put an addition onto their business. Local lender, how much of that million do you want? Local lender says, we'll take our usual 70%, right? Um, and then mass development will either loan that extra 20%, they can go up to 90% loan to value ratio, or they will just offer a guarantee. So the, the local lender loans the entire amount, but 20% of it is essentially risk-free because it's guaranteed by mass development. So it's a way of uh, businesses to kind of stretch their available assets to maybe you know take on more um, than than they, they might you know do with traditional funding. So these are the things that we talk about all the time with businesses. Uh, last thing I'll close with is a very uh, typical scenario: is we'll get approached by a consultant, um, and here's you know I'm making this up, but this is so so typical that it, it's, it's almost laughable. Hey, you know, we've got a biotech manufacturer looking to expand and Massachusetts is one of five states that's being considered and we need 100,000 square feet and they're gonna, they're gonna invest $300 million and create 1,200 jobs and here is what we need for the site and all that, you know, put together a package for us. So we cobble together everybody, you know, the MOBD, our office always takes the lead on these as, as part of the administration, but we will get information from um, Mass Econ. Mass Econ is our site selection partner. Business owners, if you've got a parcel of land or a building or something that you'd like to market, Mass Econ has something called the Ready 100 list. You could list your property with them, and so when one of these RFPs comes into play, all of a sudden you've got a 40,000 square foot warehouse in Southbridge um, that might come into play for someone that's looking for that, that type of space. You know, it costs a couple hundred bucks a year to list a property with, with Mass Econ. It's worth doing. You know, um, so we will, uh, whenever we get these requests, and oftentimes what's really interesting is we get the call from the consultant, hey, here's the, here's the scenario. We don't even know what the company name is. We know what the industry is, a little bit about what they do, but oftentimes it's a code name project and we don't even know who the client is until we've made it past the first cut. So part of our role also is to just respond to RFPs uh, that come in all the time. We're working on one right now for an international company that is essentially looking to invest a billion and a half dollars potentially in the Commonwealth and create over 2,000 jobs. And it's, uh, you know, uh, other than my trip to Southbridge, that's all I've been working on this week. So, <laughs> you know, and, 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 uh, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> So uh, I mean, that's it. I mean, I, 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 could, I could talk all night. I don't want to, and you don't want me to. But um, that's our job, is, is really just to connect businesses with resources that can help them be more successful, you know, um, whether it's mass development for, um, for capital investments or um, mass growth capital, which is another finance partner for operating capital. So you can't go to mass growth capital to put an addition onto your building, but if you need short-term capital to you know, buy raw material, for example, th that's a partner we would refer there. You know, uh, the workforce training fund, uh, workplace safety grants. Um, how many businesses here have any safety issues whatsoever? Department of Industrial Ac Accidents has a program. You get 25 grand a year to do safety training. So forklift operating, safe lifting, whatever it might be. Um, these are all things that the secretary wants us talking to businesses about to make sure you know, that you all know that we're here as a commonwealth. We want to help you grow your business. We want you to create jobs. We want you to be successful. You, we want you to provide you know, a good quality life for your employees. You know, and that's what we're here for. So um, 
Yeah. I thought you just mentioned he and I were talking about maybe he mass development, mass growth capital, doing a couple hours. They do them sometimes at chambers throughout. They may have done them at the, um, the local. Yeah, yeah, we've done with Alex before. Yeah. So maybe right. that could be something that could happen uh, in the next few months. Yeah, I mean, we'll typically lose, you know, we'll block out a couple hours, maybe a month ahead of time, allow you guys time to kind of market. You know that we're going to be there, and usually, you know, myself, someone from Mass Development, and someone from Mass Growth Capital will come for two hours. Uh, you know, block out 20-minute blocks with maybe six six businesses over two hours, and it's you know it's real quick for us, but it's it's a great way to to kind of have some state resources available, and you know, and then we always you know there's always a ton of follow up you know after that. So happy to do that if if it makes sense. Um, you know, uh, lenders be there just to. Uh, I mean, the, we, we, well, we come as kind of as, as Team Massachusetts, so with Mass Development being the state's, you know, lender, but um, at any point, I'm, like, happy to make introductions to, to Mass Development so you can learn more about what they do and what their programs are and how, you know, how you might work with them. And what's super important to understand is th they will never compete with a local bank. That's not their mission. You know, their mission is to augment, you know, and they also have programs like um, a brownfield mitigation fund that traditional lenders don't usually want to deal with brownfields, right? But because the mission of mass development is about creating jobs and encouraging capital investment, they play by a little bit different underwriting rules. So they'll make loans on things that uh, traditional lenders won't. So there's a role for, you know, almost everybody um, in here. But, yeah, we're happy to make any introductions if, if, if necessary as well. So, okay. So... I'm sorry. I, I've already spoken too long, but thank no, you. Right. Thanks for yeah, listening. It's, it's good. Yep. All Great. Very Thanks. Good. Thank you very yeah. much, sure. Kevin. Sure. Thanks. All right. Again, Kevin will be here for a few minutes at the end, so you can grab a hold of him and, and kind of talk to him. Um, at this point, Melissa, I'm going to bring you up. And uh, again, Melissa's from Quaybog Valley. <laughs> More Anna. U B C D. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi everybody. Is this is this right? I'm not used to working with a microphone and it's it's weird to be in front of people again, but it's nice. Yeah. A little nervous to be in front of people, but it's good. I'm glad we can all be together. And so it won't amplify <coughs> your voice, but it'll just be my Okay. Okay. So um, I'm with the Quaybog Valley CDC, uh, the Quaybog Valley uh, Community Development Corporation, which we're calling the Quaybog Valley CDC because that's a mouthful. Um, some of you might have known my uh, colleague, Gail uh, Farnsworth French. Uh, I believe she used to come to a lot of these meetings. Um, she's since retired, but um, she still keeps in touch with us. Uh, we're located in Ware, Mass. Um, we're a small nonprofit. Um, we were started in uh, 1925 as a loan fund uh, for businesses that couldn't access uh, traditional bank financing. That's how we got started. Um, for businesses who really, um, you know, just aren't considered bankable. Um, so since 1995, um, we've been doing that. 27 years later, here we are. Um, and it's still our primary mission to help um, small businesses who can't access traditional financing, who are considered unbankable, to help them, uh, we like to say, to help them start, stabilize, and grow, um, to get the financing they need to start, stabilize, and grow. Um, I don't want to make it sound like banks are the bad guys at all. Um, as uh, Kevin was saying, you know, banks are um, our friends. We, uh, at the CDC, uh, we have a number of um, representatives from local banks that sit on our board of directors and they actually sit um, on our loan committee that makes all of our loan decisions. So bankers are good guys, um, but banks are heavily regulated. Um, you know, when it comes to small business, you know, there's a lot of things that they just can't do. Um, and uh, so that's where, that's where we like to step in. Um, in fact, banks actually are our um, biggest source of referrals. Um, because if they can't help, a, if they have a good client, they can't help them, they often send them to us to see if we can help them. Um, we are funded by a um, no, number of different sources. We get a lot of money from the federal government. We get money from the state. Uh, we work closely with Mass Growth Corporation. Uh, we work with them. We also um, do a lot of uh, private sector grant applications. Um, and we also, um, we get a lot of donations. So that's, uh, so, so we have a little more flexibility than the bank when it comes to small business, business financing. I'm sorry, my mouth is really dry. <laughs> Um, there's a number of um, reasons why a bank might be considered unbankable. Uh, I'm sorry, a small business might be considered unbankable. 
Um, one of the main ones is um, if it's a startup, a lot of times banks want to see two years of business financials. You know, they're not really able to, uh, to give a startup um, application a lot of um, attention. We're very well, uh, willing to work with startups. Uh, we think that startups are a key to growing the economy, so we're happy to talk to them. We have a, um, a business planning class that we recommend to all of our start to any startups. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute when I talk about our classes. But um, again, our mission is to help businesses start, stabilize, and grow. So you know we're all for uh, startups. Another reason that um, a business might be considered unbankable is um, the business owner's credit score. Um, a lot of times a bank has a number, a magic number, and uh, you know you either meet it or you don't. Um, and if you don't, uh, if your credit score is less than that number, they just can't help you. Um, at the CDC, we do check the credit score. Um, it's something that we look for, um, but it's not, um, it's not a one and done. We don't just say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you based on the credit score. So we really look at the whole package. Um, so don't be shy if, you have, <laughs> if your credit score is less than stellar, we'll still work with you. Um, another reason that a bank, might, a, a small business might consider, be considered uh, unbankable is a lack of collateral. Um, you know, banks have a certain um, requirement for what they need to get for collateral. And often they want to be, um, for example, if they were going to get a mortgage, they want to have the first position on that mortgage. Um, we're willing to take a second position on a mortgage. We're willing to, to be a little more flexible in collateral. We might take... Um, an older vehicle that a bank wouldn't really consider. Um, we don't take anything that that eats. We've had people offer up um, <laughs> not children, but animals uh, for like a farm. We we don't want anything that eats, um, but we are flexible when it comes to collateral. Um, I think <laughs> I think one of the um, one of the big reasons that we're different from a typical bank is, um, and another reason why a, a small business might be seen as unbankable, is the cash flow. Um, typically, if you go to a bank, if you say, you know, we want, um, I want a $50,000 loan, they're going to um, put that loan into a structure that they already um, created. So they might say, and I'm just making these numbers up. Um, I need to get a drink. I'm sorry. I, my mouth is just so dry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. Nothing Nothing you. So, um, for example, um, if with cash flow, uh, if you go to a bank and you say, I'd like a $50,000 loan, um, they'll say, okay, we're going to do five years um, at 5%. And this is what the monthly payment for that would be. And then they look at the cash flow. And they'll say, oh, well, I'm sorry, that doesn't, you know, it's not going to work with the cash flow. We can't help you. Um, what we try and do is look at the cash flow first. And then we say, well, what kind of monthly payment could this business uh, afford to make for a loan? So we take the cash flow and then we structure the loan around that number, whatever that monthly payment could be. So where a bank might be, and again, I'm just making these up, um, you know, five years at 5%, something like that. Um, at the Quaybog Valley CDC, we might go eight years. We'll go a little bit longer. So that monthly payment is a little bit lower. Um, it does mean that the uh, interest rate's a little bit higher because um, we're assuming that risk that the bank doesn't take. Uh, and just throwing that out there, right around now our um, interest rates are right around 7 or 8%, just to give you a sense. It is a little bit more than a bank, but um, again, that's because of the added risk. I don't uh, want to suggest that we can approve every loan application we get. I wish we could, but we can't, um, so we don't. We do check credit scores. We do require collateral. Um, we're just more flexible in how we can help people. <clears throat> we are able to work with bankable businesses in some areas. For example, um, if, a, if a business is going to be applying for a commercial loan, and they might want to have some help um, making that loan package as strong as it can be. Um, one thing that banks want to see, cash flow projections. A lot of times a small business might be great at fixing cars or cutting hair or whatever, you know, making flower arrangements, whatever it is. Um, but that doesn't necessarily translate to um, knowing how to do good cash flow projections, understanding what those numbers really mean, understanding those financials. So um, even with a business that's totally bankable, that's going to take their loan to a bank, 
we can help um, make that application stronger. We can help with the cash flow projections. We can help with writing that business plan. So um, that's one way that we can work with bankable businesses as well. Another way we can help with bankable businesses is <clears throat> when um, the bank's exposure is um, at risk. For example, again, I'm just making up these numbers. If a small business had, say, an equipment loan for $30,000, and then they, have the, um, they get an opportunity that's going to cost them $150,000. They go to the bank for, you know, we've got this $30,000 loan. We'd like an, ad an additional one fifty. dollars The bank might not feel comfortable with that amount of exposure. So uh, the way that we can come in and play is um, we could take and refinance that equipment loan, that $30,000 equipment loan, and then the bank can take on the $150,000, the bigger loan. So that's win-win. Everybody wins. The bank gets their bigger loan. We get the smaller loan, and the business owner gets the financing they need. Similar to that, um, we also do some gap financing sometimes. So if, um, if you go to the bank and you say you need a $200,000 loan, they'll say, well, we can do one fifty. dollars Maybe the Quaybog Valley CDC can come in and do the additional fifty. dollars so um, that's another way that we can work with bankable businesses. And I just want to throw out right now, um, we are offering a loan product um, to help businesses come back from COVID. We're calling it our rebound loan to help people bounce back from the pandemic. Um, right now, our rate for the first year is 1%. So I know the question is, what's the rate the second year? Uh, the second year, it's, um, it's back up to our normal rate, which, like I said before, is about 7 or 8%. So, but that first, that first year of 1%, we hope that'll help people get a little bit ahead. Um, and there's no pre-penalty payments for any of our loans. So if you were able to get the rebound loan with the 1% for the first year, if you can make more payments or even pay it off within that first year, good for you. We're happy to do that too. Um, <clears throat> as Kevin was talking about earlier, the Workforce Training, um, workforce training Fund, we, um, we are a workforce training organization. We offer classes. Um, for things like all the Microsoft products like PowerPoint, um, Access, Excel, uh, even Word. Some people need, need Word. Um, so we can offer those classes. Um, we also have, um, as I mentioned before, we do business planning class for uh, startups. That's a four-week class um, that has... We have an attorney come in and talk to people. It's a great opportunity to spend, uh, you know, have some free question and answer time with an attorney. We have an insurance agent who comes in and talks about the different kinds of insurance that um, a business needs, you know, liability, workman's comp, things like that. Um, we have an excellent marketing consultant who talks about the importance of marketing. I think everybody understands that these days. Uh, and we have a commercial lender come in uh, to talk about what are banks really looking at when they're looking at a commercial app from a small business. Um, uh, we also do sometimes we serve safe classes. If anyone you know, has a restaurant, we do um, QuickBooks classes for people who are interested in learning more about how to use that software. <clears throat> um, for some of our, we all, for some of those classes, um, the workforce training classes, as Kevin was talking about, those are uh, free to businesses who pay into the uh, state unemployment system. Some of the other classes, it's hard for me to say how much they cost because um, it varies according to our funding. Because we're grant funded, things wax and wane. Uh, sometimes we have funding for this, sometimes we have funding for that. Sometimes we get a generous donation that we can use for funding a whole business planning class and it's free to everybody. Um, but most of the time our services uh, vary according to um, the annual household income of the business owner. So if a business owner has a low annual household income, uh, we can usually provide a lot more services. Um, and even if a, even if a business owner is from a moderate income uh, home, we can often uh, pay for half the cost of the classes or other services. And when I talk about other services, um, some of the things that we can do, um, we can pay for some work with uh, professional consultants. For example, um, if you were considering moving your business to a new location and you wanted an attorney to take a look at uh, the lease to make sure that it you know, wasn't too heavily in favor of the landlord, um, we could pay for, um, you know, for, to have an attorney look at that document and see what he thinks. You know, that's a couple hundred dollars for sure. Um, if it's an LM, a low to moderate income household, we could pay for all of that. If it's a little bit more, we'll, we might be able to pay for up to half of that. So it's, it's worth checking out. 
Um, same goes with the marketing consultants we work with. Um, we might be able to pay for um, a the full cost of creating a website for your business. Um, we might be able to pay for designing a logo for your business, um, helping like a social media plan, things like that. Um, if, you, if you're interested in working with a consultant, uh, we might be able to pay for all of that cost. Um, we also have accountants that we work with, so if you need some help just tidying up your books, making sure everything's ready. Um, right now is not the best time because our accountants are very uh, tax uh, focused on taxes right now, but um, we, do we do offer that service. And um, more and more we're seeing um, requests for work with business consultants, and that is another thing that we offer. With, um, with the pandemic, a lot of people got PPP loans, EIDL loans, different kinds of funding coming in. And I think a lot of business owners are just sort of taking the time right now to, to take a good look at their business. You know, it's a good time to sort of pause and see where things are. Do you need to pivot? You know, uh, where, where do things stand with your business? So we also have some business consultants that, who are excellent, um, who are willing to sit down, look at your, you know, look at your plan, business plan, look at where you are, where you want to be, and see if they can help you get a plan to get there. So that's another thing that we can pay for. And again, you know, sometimes we can pay for that full cost. So um, something to think about. So again, um, Quaybog Valley CDC, we're in where. It's only a Zoom call away. Um, we want to help businesses start, stabilize, and grow. So I hope, you'll, uh, I hope you'll give us a call if you think we can help you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Melissa. And next up, I have uh, Jerry Maldonado from uh, Q Sigamon. QCC, yep. yeah, I got to cheat. Quinn Sigamon Community College. So. To which you are an alum? Yes, I know I'm an alum. That's what I, I announced that earlier. So aren't you, so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jerry Maldonado from Quinn Sigamon Community College. I'm the Southbridge site leader, QCC at Southbridge site leader. Uh, we moved to uh, the high school, the new high school on Torrey Road. I know some people thought that we had left Quinn's, um, Southbridge. We did not. We were on optical drive from, I believe, 99, excuse me, 2009 until recently, but we did move and we're still here. Um, so some of the services that I offer, uh, our campus is located in the back of the brand new high school. We have three regular classrooms with computers in the back, and then we also have a lab. We have a beautiful lab. If you saw the, uh, the segment that Denise did with me uh, in the fall, you kind of had a, a, a little tour of the school and what we offer. So. What we do is we actually offer four credit classes, and what we're looking to do is we're looking to offer the first year of any, any of the programs at the, at the main campus. We are trying to be healthcare focused, um, so anything, any, most of the healthcare programs, you can come to us and do your first year with us. You can also do your prereqs with us, again, the first year, so we're talking 24 to 30 credits. If you are also interested in the mass transfer program, you can do most of your classes with us as well. So we're trying to offer quite a bit on the little campus that, that I have. Um, in addition, we are looking to also start some business classes. So right now, I'm doing all the prereqs. I'm doing a lot of biology. I, th I think I have probably seven biology classes going on in Southbridge. Uh, excuse me, um, eight, actually nine biology classes in Southbridge. But we're also trying to offer other classes, like I said, the, the prereqs. In the fall, I'm going to start offering more business classes. So economics, accounting, intro to business, management, those are the types of classes that we're looking to offer. We don't have a certificate yet in, in Southbridge. That's something that's on the consideration. But right now, we do not have that. Um, but like I said, it, we're right here. We're trying to serve the, um, the students or the individuals here in, in South Worcester County. That's our, that's our goal, is to serve people. Whether or not you attend QCC at Southbridge, if you are, take classes remotely or online, you are more than welcome to come to the campus and use our facilities. If you go to the main campus for most of your classes, again, you're more than welcome to come to QCC at Southbridge. Besides classes, we also have three individuals that are fantastic. If you go to the main campus, you often have to go to admissions and then wait your turn to go to financial aid and then wait your turn to go to advising. And we all know how it's wonderful to do that, right? So I have three individuals, and what they do is all th the three of them can give, they do all those services in one sitting. So you come in Monday through Thursday usually, you sit down, and that person can walk you through the admission process, the financial aid process, and also the advising process. And then on Friday I have somebody who does mainly advising, but she can also help you with the other steps as well. 
So it's one-step shopping rather than going to all the different offices. Besides the four credit classes, I'm also offering non-credit classes. So if you're looking to do uh, short-term uh, programs, you can come see us. Uh, one of the things that we do offer is if you have anybody that's a SNAP recipient, food stamps recipient, we have quite a few non-credit classes that are free. So they're costing a couple hundred dollars, they're actually 100% free. Uh, so they can come in and, and take care of that. Um, in addition to that, I also have early college. We are located in the high school, so we're ta taking advantage of that. Uh, we have quite a few high school students, Southbridge high, high school students, who are taking classes. The, the last, uh, I think it's their seventh period, the last period of the day, instead of going to another class in the high school class, they come to our little area. And right now, this semester, I'm offering psychology and, and computers, Microsoft uh, computers. So um, last semester, I offered FYE, which stands for First Year Experience, and I was offering English 101. So every semester, we will have a conversation with the high school principal, see what classes are appropriate, and that's what we'll try to offer. Uh, right now, um, a grant, uh, I believe, was up to 40 students that we, that we can serve. Uh, we did be, we're looking to, uh, we got a grant last year for 20000 We got another grant for 20000 that's 40000 And we're trying to become a designated early college um, institution, which means that opens us up for more funding which means right now we only serve seniors and, and juniors. We're hoping to maybe serve sophomores in the future, depending on, on what kind of grants we get. So we're just trying to open it up to as many students as possible so they can come in. Uh, as you probably know, uh, Southbridge is, 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 uh, is having some issues at the high school level. So we're trying to help with that. Which, um, over the summer, there's a couple of programs that I'm trying to offer. Uh, one of the programs is uh, programming video games. So that's going to be a couple of weeks. We have a grant funding for that, so the high school students can come in. We're probably going to run that the, the Monday after the 4th of July, and they can come in and learn all about uh, programming video games. So that should be fun for high school students. Um, one of the programs that I'm looking to do is if a student graduated in 21 or about to graduate in 22, but they're not quite ready for college, maybe they just need a little push on English and math, I'm going to have a program to basically help those, those students just over that hump so they, when, in September they can go ahead and go to college and feel a little bit more confident about their skills. And also with that, I'll be a little bit of a career, um, kind of help them a little bit as to what, what you choose for a career. So that will be part of that program. And then for adults like you and I, who may have been out of school for more than a year or two, you know, um, but you want to go to college, but you haven't been thinking about this. If, if I put you in an algebra class right now, how many of you would pass? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, my dear Aunt Sally, something, I forgot what it was. That, you know, poor, poor my dear Aunt Sally, that's what it was. Um, think about also if I put a book in front of you and I say, uh, can you read this book and tell me about it? You know, you, um, describe to me why Romeo and Juliet is whatever. Tell me why the drapes were blue. I don't know. Okay, so w we also have a program that I'm looking to offer in August, and this is geared more towards adults. You want to take a class, may, you might have a degree, you may not, um, but it's, you've been out of school for a little while. So in August for five weeks, I'm also offering a class, Math and English. It's basically a refresher to get you ready for 101. Um, and again, most of us, I don't care if you have a degree, I don't care if you have an associate's degree, no degree, a master's degree like I do, it doesn't matter. If you've been out of school for a while, these are things that we don't know how to do. Uh, we don't do it in our, our everyday life, so we really don't know what the heck we're doing. Um, so those are some of the programs that we're offering, but we also have different modalities. So we are teaching, having classes in the morning, and they start as early as 8 o'clock or 9, and they go until about noon. And then we have classes in the evenings. I'm actually on campus. There's actually somebody on my campus right now, and she'll be there till 10 o'clock at night. Um, because we offer classes until 10 o'clock at night. From 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, the campus is open. Um, and we offer quite a few classes. We also offer classes, the 15-week classes, just like most of us went to school with. We also offer seven-week classes. And what we're trying to do is right now, it's sort of flip-flopping morning and evenings. Maybe some classes will be, will be 15 weeks in the evenings and others at 7 o'clock, uh, excuse me, 7 weeks in the morning and then the next semester will flip-flop. Just trying to see what works better for our students. Um, so that's what we have at the campus. And as far as, uh, as you're here, business owners, I also want to know what it is that you need. I can offer a lot at the campus, but I need to hear from the community what it is that you're looking for. 
Uh, I know manufacturing is a big deal that I've heard about. I can't offer that in Southbridge. Uh, can we offer that at the main campus? Yes, we can. And we have partnerships to help you with manufacturing. Uh, what I can offer is, like I said, I can offer the prereqs for your students. I can offer business classes. That's, that's something that I'm doing in the fall. And I can offer, if you're in the medical field, I can offer trying to get the, the first 30 credits in the medical field. So that is what I can offer you. Uh, anything else, I can have a conversation. Um, obviously, the facilities are, you know, we don't, I can't do everything. I can't be to all things to all people. But there's quite a few things that we can do. Uh, we are working with local organizations to uh, do more on the HHA, uh, home health aid, uh, on, the medical, on the medical side, CNAs, LPNs, RNs. So those are programs that we do have and we're trying to work. Um, there is waiting lists on some of those programs because they're very, very popular. Um, but we do, as, you know, we do the best we can. And while you're on the waiting list, you, could sit, you can go to Southbridge and you can take care of all your prereqs. So you're not just sitting around doing nothing, just waiting. You can get all your prereqs out of the way before you go into the uh, formal nursing programs. Um, so any, any questions for me? Yes, Peg. So that's a very good question, yes. So I went to uh, a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and Alex was there, the, uh, the chamber. And what I got out of, out of that chamber is the fact that there's a need for internships. Uh, we have a person in the main campus, Nicole Wheeler, who, takes, who is the person that you talk to. But just reach out to me, and I can, I can introduce you to Nicole. And we do have an internship program. We have students, as you can imagine, that are looking uh, to do internships. And obviously, there are businesses who would love to have students. So that, that's an you know, easy thing to, uh, to talk about. And hopefully, we can help you. Um, I know that the town is looking for interns. And I, know, I, I think I put you in touch with Nicole, right? I'm thinking for the employees. OK. The employers. OK. Um, we're trying to talk about it with the high school yep. and with, the, with uh, QCC, if that's something we can start to get around the community. It keeps coming up in all the master plans. You know, we need to do more internships. Okay, we need to grow those internship programs. But I don't know where it was happening and if it wasn't, how do we start it? So I think I reached out to Alex recently. We met at the high school recently. Yep. And so hopefully you can help for any businesses that might have an interest. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember when I went to the uh, meeting to chamber meeting, I was approached by four different businesses who were looking for interns. So I went ahead and I put them in touch with uh, whatever, the person on the main campus who does internships. So, so if we were to, if we're the SVP, for instance, were to send out an email to all your partners and say, for anybody interested in um, an internship, reach out to Jerry, yeah. we could put you in touch with, right? So for those who may not come to the meetings regularly, at least they're seeing. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you go to, uh, if you want to write down the website, um, I, I'd give you my phone number, but I don't know it. Um, <laughs> I, it says, do you, can I see my card, please? <laughs> Okay, my telephone number at the campus, 774-366-4766. 774-366-4766. That's my telephone number. Thank you. And then the website is qcc.edu slash qcc-southbridge. That's, uh, that's the website. That, that takes you directly to the Southbridge website and my information as well. Kind of <laughs> Just have one thing, uh, Peggy mentioned the internship programs. Um, I would advise any business that is interested in hiring interns, reach out to your local mass hire office. They actually have programs available where um, essentially half of the salary of an intern can be paid uh, through a grant for a period of, don't quote me, three months, six months, I forget what the exact period is. But um, your ma local mass hire office can offer your guidance on that. So it's, it's just another great resource that's available. So he's, he's taking away my employees. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so. We're all part of the same family. Oh, all right. Yeah, but you just took away my, you know, my opportunities for my students. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> are people who are unemployed looking for? They, they can be, yeah. Okay. Okay. A sort of different model. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess you're supposed to talk to someone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, Okay. So while I have a microphone, I need some backup dancers and backup singers? <laughs> no? No takers? Okay. Uh, any other questions for me? And if you want to come, come by and just visit the, the campus, please just give me a call or email me. I'd be more than happy to. Uh, I do know my email address. Uh, it's G Maldonado, G-M-A-L-D-O-N-A-D-O uh, at qcc.mass.edu. So, thank you very much. I'd love to have a partner meeting there if we could. Um, yes, we can. So I can, I can fit probably 25 people or so 
and I do have a room. Yes, we can do that. So if you want to, if you want to do that next time, just let me know ahead of time. So I wasn't sure what the capacity was going to be, and this being my first meeting, I wasn't sure what to expect. But yeah, that'd be great. Sounds great. Thank so, yeah, thanks, Jerry. So, I'm not sure if you saw the video, but um, Southbridge Community TV. So on Southbridge Community TV YouTube, um, the the tour that Jerry did with Denise is is listed on the YouTube channel. So Southbridge Community TV YouTube, okay, Southbridge Community Television YouTube, and uh, it's so the the uh, the the blur the uh, listing is there. So. Um, and I don't know how long it was, but it, it, it was 15 minute, uh, 15 minute. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, somewhere around the first of the year, wasn't it? Um, I think, but anyways, so that's, that's available. Uh, again, we've got, uh, Southridge Community TV here today as well. Um, parts of this meeting will be published. Um, so it's something that we're going to send out to our partners so that they see, uh, all of the information that you guys have spoken about tonight. And uh, so, yeah, Peg. So I just want to thank all three of you for coming in. Kevin was so generous with his time this afternoon. He spent an hour and a half driving around the town, checking out things like Sturbridge Coffee Roasters, 12 Crane, the potential rail trail path, the investments that could potentially be spawned by things like that. And so, uh, you know, I feel like part of our job is to just show the state what a good job we are, we're doing fighting for ourselves. And he'd said, you're doing everything you need to right now to get in, you know, to, to, to build economic development. So I think we should be very proud of ourselves. Yeah, and then just hearing Jerry talk about um, all the great things that are over in the high school now, it just, it feels so promising that these kids are seeing college right in front of them, that they're, ta they're taking these early college courses, right? And then now we have micro enterprise assistance grants coming through Quaybog Valley CDC to help our few businesses that are actually accessing them. I just, I think that there's a lot of really good momentum. So thank you all very, very much, really. All right, so uh, at this point, we, um, there's a couple things going on. We usually do open mic uh, for announcements and stuff. Um, August 5th. Uh, Woosox, August 5th. Yes, for our bright futures. Oh, okay. So, uh, so Quasi's got that. But, um, and then, Pete, I saw you had the road race on there. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand you the mic, Pete. Right. Just stand up. I, was, I was asked to uh, remind everyone about the... The uh, VFW YMCA road race. It's the second oldest continuously run road race in the country behind the Boston Marathon. Wow. And uh, as usual, it's uh, uh, vo all volunteer. So they're looking for uh, more volunteers, typically. Uh, this year they need marshals at intersections where the road race crosses intersections. The um, auxiliary police no longer exist, um, so uh, they're looking for volunteers. And they have uh, permission from the chief to allow that to be done by marshals. So if anyone wants to help out, uh, it is a holiday weekend. Uh, what is the requirement? You go like you bright orange vest, I would guess. You go like this, or or this. You want to try that? So anyway, you don't get the state police rate at time and a half. Yeah. No. No. So I have some flyers here that uh, Mora Power, um, who is the organizer at the Y, asked me to leave, so you can take a look at these. Um, again. She's the contact person. Uh, it's obvious it's on the 4th of July. Uh, it's, it is an exciting event uh, to see, you know, 200 runners. Uh, now wheelchairs, and every year there are more and more wheelchairs. There are families that just walk the course. Um, there's no big prize, but there are a lot of prizes. What they do is they collect prizes from businesses in town. Uh, and then, donations yeah, do, f through donations, and uh, and award them at the end. The the, the runners, uh, you know, there are some very competitive runners. I've been involved for a couple of years, not running, 
Uh, and, you know, I mean, it's like the guy takes off and he's back in like 10 minutes. I mean, I don't, I don't know how they do that. But um, so there are some really competitive runners. And then, they, again, they're down to families that, you know, pushing a stroller and just want to do the, do the thing. So I have these flyers here. I'll leave them and you can take them. And again, like Pete said, um, they're, they're, uh, they'll take donations from businesses. So if you have any goods or, um, or even, I mean, some, you know, gift cards or any types of services, and they'll take donations as well. Um, so they're appreciative of that, and, and they're giving all those out to the people that are running. So, um, And then Quasi's sitting here in the front, and I'm going to mention Quasi's got um, a big celebration on May 14th. Um, and it's going to be held in Webster at St. Joseph's School. I'm going to give you the mic and let you talk about it, all right? Thank you, Bob. Yeah, so May 14th, uh, we tried to do this before, uh, uh, right before COVID started, and uh, so we had to cancel, but we finally got around to do this. So May 14th, uh, 5.30 p.m., we'd we'll love to have you guys. Uh, we also um, looking for sponsors. Uh, if anyone also want to give a gift basket as a business, We'll love that also. I don't know how you found out about uh, Usox yet. We didn't even put it out yet. <laughs> but um, yes, August 5th, um, Usox game um, will be for our brave future. If, uh, if you want to take the kids to the, to the game, that would be awesome too. But Yeah, so I brought some uh, some flyers here too for you. So um, you can go to ourbravefutureinc.org. Um, that will have all the information you need uh, for the gala. So what we're trying to do pretty much uh, – all the people trying to celebrate all the people. So we started five years ago. Um, all the people that's helped us, you know, through, um, throughout. So Bob, Denise, um, <laughs> you've been helping us uh, since the beginning. We want to give some awards to them also. Um, you know, the sheriff will be there, trying to invite some important people to, to the event, have some live music, oh, trying to make it almost a, a fun situation where we'll have a bar there. Um, <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll try to bring as much wine as we can also. So, um, But basically, so to raise money for our summer program that we're going to be having this summer. Um, but that's what the main uh, problem that we have this year is, well, last year I had 98 you know, percent of the students that came was all on scholarships. So we're trying to, try to get as many, as many scholarships as we can for those kids again. So that, that's the main goal. Uh, like I said, if, you're, if you, if you want just want to come, we'll love that. If you want to donate just a gift basket uh, or you want to sponsor a table, I know if you do the sponsorship, you actually get a table with a sponsorship as well. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, the Woo Sox. So, uh, town manager Michael McCall uh, pulled me into a call yesterday with the Woo Sox team, and they uh, were talking about how they do these town takeovers. So let's be the best. And the, the winner, whoever shows, gets the most presence from their town, gets uh, highlighted at the end of the season. So we get brought back in for, you know, some, some I think, trophy or something very neat. Our color guard's gonna be there. We're gonna have a little bit of presence. We're gonna hopefully have the first pitch by some of our town officials. It'll be a lot of fun. So if you can start to get the word out now, um, and then I think, Someone's been sending the link around, right, already, um, for people to start purchasing tickets. If you haven't seen it yet, maybe the SVP can get it on their next uh, communication. So the, the uh, small percentage of the ticket price goes to our Bright Futures. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, um, again, um, I wanted to mention Michael Brunell's here from the Southridge Rec Committee. Um, Southridge Business Partnership last year actually canceled our first uh, outdoor uh, movie that we were doing the, at the drive-in movie and um, we still have the rights to that movie so uh, the board the board has voted to uh, give it to the Southbridge uh, Recreation Committee and they're going to be showing um, Home Alone um, uh, April 20 22nd. 22nd Friday the Friday after the last Friday of school vacation week April vacation and uh, it'll be at the community center and again sponsored by us because uh, we had paid for it but didn't actually end up using it um, and I actually just got the certificate for the rights so that's uh, I, I got to pass that along to you so you got it in hand um, and uh, any anybody can go to that it's uh, it's yeah, it's going to be shown free of charge 
um, in the community center. That's awesome. And inside, too. The inside, right. So do you want to talk, Mike, on the... Wait, do we bring volunteers? Come on, come on. Come on. Hello. So, uh, yes, um, the business partnership with, was gracious enough to uh, offer up their movie licensing to Home Alone, and I will be playing it. Uh, we have more than enough chairs. Um, they're more of a, you know, community center oriented, so they might not be the most comfortable. But uh, anyone is welcome to bring any, any chairs that they find comfortable or anything like that. We will have more than enough. Um, if you want to sit on the floor, you're more than welcome. But, yeah, any way that you're uh, able to uh, attend, it's obviously free. Uh, we will be doing snacks for a small donation towards the business, uh, towards the Southbridge Recreation, uh, brought to you by uh, the Big Bunny, which is, thank you so much for that. And if I can also do another shameless plug, I have a spring calendar of all different things going on in town. Um, I think it starts April 9th, so it's the Saturday after this one coming up. Uh, there'll be something to do at 10 a.m. every Saturday morning. If it's a trail walk, if it's yoga, um, arts and crafts. So uh, come by for that. That's obviously free as well. All right. So, yep. So, so... so. So things things are happening. We're we're getting things going here in town. Um, is anybody else? I got open mic, and but I'm going to also uh, announce that um, if somebody anybody's interested, um, the Sturbridge Coffee Roastery is across the street, uh, and Elvis has graciously said that he'd give a tour if anybody's interested um, to see the facility across the street. So, uh, which is normally closed. It, yeah, it won't take a long time, but uh, it, but it's still closed to, to the public normally. So um, if somebody's interested in seeing uh, the coffee operation, it's um, we'll take a little ganter across the street. So, and that's pretty much all I have at this point today. Um, any other questions, uh, Lisa? Yes, the Autumn Fest Autumn. 2022. Um, I think we're going to be starting it after April 15th. Okay. Um, okay. So meetings for the Autumn Fest, um, which is actually September 17th, 2022. Uh, meetings for the Autumn Fest will begin uh, in April. And so uh, start looking for announcements for that coming out. So. We would love as many volunteers. Yep. Yeah. 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 So um, I think the organization of the whole event is continuously getting better. We learn every year and try and make it better. So um, it's, it's probably the biggest event that's an uh, in-town event uh, supported by all of all the local businesses. So and if um, anyone has any food truck recommendations, please pass along to, <laughs> to me or to the yeah. info uh, to Lisa or to Elvis, you know, talk to either one of them. So. Didn't we have, we had a fair amount of them before who used to come from Woodstock? The ones who used to go to the Woodstock Fair, they came great for the crowding. The yeah. Oh, I don't know. Nope. They haven't come to ours. No. Yeah. I think she lives in Sturbridge, the woman who used to own those stands. Oh, I think she yeah. sold. Yeah, mom, well, yes. Yeah. Do you know more? Oh. She hasn't. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> you can reach out to her. So, anyways, good good ideas. So that's what we're all here for. So, can we consider talking to the uh, Taylor Brook people because they seem to have uh, a good round of, of, of food trucks every 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 weekend. They seem to have a different one. Taylor Taylor Brook. Yeah, we reach out to a lot of food trucks. Yes, we did reach out. We reach out to a lot of food trucks. Um, last year, I think, you know, lessons learned. We were trying to open it up to local, like, uh, restaurants and establishments in, like, our neighboring towns. And when we found out they weren't able to commit, then we reached out to food trucks. But now they were already committed, so. Yeah, it's kind of late. So it's one of those things that we've got to get on top of it right now. I mean, it's really hard to get them too because they can could, they could just pull up at a brewery and make a ton of money and not really have Yeah, well, that's that's the big thing. I, and again, though, the big thing is, is that, you know, we do know what the numbers were. I mean, we were running close to 500 people an hour. 
um, um, at the event this past year, and uh, I don't think we're, you know, our, our numbers are going to stay around that um, at least, you know, and maybe larger. So um, it, it's we have numbers that we can put in front of people too. So um, make make the. Uh, yeah. So, all right. You know oh. Just so you know, doing some other events, we are paying attention to what's going on in Putnam, such as the fire and ice. And I've been watching focused on Southbridge, and I see that the town people have been asking about um, a hot rod car show kind of thing, as well as a motorcycle event, mm -hmm. which I found interesting. Um, so there's nothing in the works yet, but some of the people here and many of the people that are part of SPP we're looking to kind of not have just four or five people doing everything and ask everybody to start getting involved. And if we do, mm -hmm. then we might create something. Right. Um, can I just mention, Mike, didn't you say something about that you got eight different concert on the Commons weekends? Oh, oh. yes. Um, That's all. That's, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so, all right. So, eight, eight concerts on the Commons? Two months worth of concerts on the common this summer, so um, all all booked and all booked. Uh, booked and scheduled and paid for. So they are going on. So again, um, look forward to uh, concerts on the common. Oh, okay. Very curious. Alex. Um, I did just want to say um, that we have the attorney general. Oh. We have the Attorney General coming for a luncheon on April 12th at the Southbridge Hotel. Um, I'd really like to show her a nice welcome uh, here. The last time we had um, an, a big event like this, it was also at the Southbridge Hotel with uh, Governor Baker. Um, I'd like to show her the same kind of love that we showed him. Um, and he was competing against Big Poppy, who was at Yankee Spirits at the same time he was. So that was that was some turnout. So um, we'd love to have you for a nice lunch over there at the hotel. I'm higher now, Grant. Did, yeah. did just does anyone know about that? Because I know it's eligible for every business here. Right? Yeah. Uh, if you just reach out to your, your local mass hire office, they'll be able to give you a, the entire rundown on that. Okay. So. So. MGCC is that that was how I got the email. But they were publicizing this. So right. MGCC okay. is Mass Growth Capital, who I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's acronym <laughs> City, right? But yeah. if you just Google, you know, Mass Hire Office, there are Mass Hire offices literally across Commonwealth, and whatever the closest one is to your business, just call them, and they can give you all the information you need about about the program. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I mean, um, yes. just like the summary of it was. Is, uh, it's four thousand yeah. dollars towards like a signing bonus to attract people back into your workforce. Right. I think up to yeah. which you know uh, for a small local town where you mean I don't think you can you can get someone with that, but it, it is a huge amount to offer someone to come on board and. Uh, I don't know, it was really amazing. Yeah, the gist is, the gist is it's um, effective March 23rd, I believe. You have to hire, you have to retain them for a minimum of 60 days. Um, and it can be used either for training them or say you hire 10 people that are all, say, because the hotel needs to do a big hire. They want to get a whole bunch of staff. They can spend all that money per employee on training and development or tips training or, or you know, um, serve safe certification, any number of things. Or they can incentivize trying to attract people and say, like Amazon has done so effectively, and say, come on with us, stay on with us, you know, make it through your probation, and you'll get a $4,000 signing bonus, which does get young people's attention. So <laughs> they're, they're full time, right? Or is it thirty a minimum of I think it was thirty it's either thirty or thirty two, but I think it's thirty two. I think it's I think it's a brilliant incentive, frankly. Um, I think the program is eligible for tip based workers as well. So yeah. that's qualify. So it doesn't just have to be a minimum wage or above position, it can also be the, the tip wage as well. Correct. Okay. If you, I, I've, got the, I've, I've got the same notification. I can push it to you if you send me a reminder tomorrow. Yeah, yeah I, will. Yeah. I, will. I just, I was reading. I was like, this is great. Yeah. It's brilliant. All right. All right. Any other? Uh, Bob? Yep. It might be easy if I get up there and face yeah. him. Yeah. Good evening, folks. Uh, Rob Caprera. I'm going to turn in town. Been around since 1979, but I'm not really that old. 
Um, the reason I'm uh, sharing with you, I have taught in law school for over 25 years. I've lectured on wills, trusts, and estates, on probate. I actually, I think, lectured here a couple years ago. And I'm available. And I now know that with COVID in the rearview mirror, groups are getting together, clubs are needing speakers. You can call me anytime. I can just come on the fly and speak, and I'd be very willing to do that. So uh, I'm available, uh, and I'd like to speak at your groups. All right, thank you. Um, anybody else in the back? I, I had to rush here, and I didn't get time to go home to change, but um, my name is Abigail, and I do live here in Southbridge. Um, I moved here last year, March, so exactly a year ago. Um, and I joined you all because I want to network. I want to find out um, how things have, uh, have been done here, because um, I'm interested in opening a business here in Southbridge. Um, I realized whenever we need beauty supplies and stuff, I have to drive all the way, way to Worcester to buy. So light went off in my head like, am I the only one driving? <laughs> I don't think so. So why not bring something closer so that everybody will have access to? So I've been working with Peg and I recently checked out Janice locations um, downtown. Um, so I'm still new in the business, and I would like to talk to folks as to what directions to head. In. And um, um, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that you guys invited me over, and um, I'll keep coming. Thank you. Great to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And that's uh, that. Uh, anybody else? Look, looking to speak at all? All right. Um, so if anybody's interested in seeing Elvis's place, I'd say meet him out in the hallway. <laughs> um, he'll take you across the street. And otherwise, thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. And uh, be safe, drive carefully, and we'll see you again next month. <laughs>